All right, welcome back into the Cowboys report. Things look very different, I know, but the Cowboys have claimed Trayvon Mullen off of waivers from the Cardinals, so got to break it down. I am actually on my back patio right now filming this because, A, I went home early today because I don't feel very good and have a fever, so we're doing that. Also, baby Olivia's asleep, so I can't film it inside. So we're outside, natural lighting, and hoping the wind does not pick up and make whatever I'm trying to say unintelligible, or at least more unintelligible than what it normally is. But, yeah, big news of the day, Trayvon Mullen claimed off of waivers by the Dallas Cowboys. He had been cut by the Arizona Cardinals. They had traded for him uh, before the year began in a deal with the Las Vegas Raiders. We'll break this all down, but hey, I would appreciate a subscription. It's free, by the way, here on the Cowboys Report free videos. In today's case, multiple times per day. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Free videos, whether it's in the office with the graphics or in today's case, out back outside where it is just a little bit cold here, at least for me in Dallas. Uh, Cowboys make the waiver claim. They're pretty far down in the waiver claim, by the way. So I'm willing to bet that nobody else put in a bid for Mo, which is probably explained by the fact that he's only played and I got my notes here in front of me. Uh, 13 games as the wind picks up, so apologies if that is an issue. 13 games the past two years due to injuries, etc. Has not been good this year. Uh, targeted 14 times. All these stats, by the way, per pro football reference, uh, so publicly available. 14 targets, 12 catches allowed. 128 yards, two scores, just the one pass breakup. Unfortunately for Mullen, despite being a pretty highly-ish touted corner coming out of Clemson and was a top 50 pick, I believe, by the Raiders, part of the disastrous John Gruden era, unfortunately. Uh, he's kind of gone the wrong direction uh, in recent years. He only played five games last year for the Raiders, 15 of 24 in coverage. That's catches allowed versus targets. 193 yards, one score. One INT, four PBUs. Does have four interceptions over his career. Started quite a few games. Um, best year was either probably his rookie year or 2020, which we'll, we'll go more in depth in here. But this is because you're a bit thin at corner right now. You know, you add Kendall Sheffield to the practice squad. You're trying to find some depth because you're down two top corners, right? You you are down Anthony Brown and you're down Jordan Lewis, and you're now playing cornerback, let's call it generously four and five, and that leaves cornerback six. They're a bit thin from that standpoint. They have the open roster spot with the putting of Terrence Steele and Jonathan Hankins on injured reserve today. So you can take a flyer on Trayvon Mullen. Does not cost you very much money at all down the stretch here. And he does fit the typical measurables of what Dan Quinn likes. Decently long arms, 31 inches there. Uh, measured in the combine, 6'1 and a quarter, 199. Not the best vert overall a good but I wouldn't call elite athlete so more on this coming here in a moment but first grade the signing for me a b c d or f let me know in the comment section it's the pin comment so if the ad break comes just let it play it's not a big deal head down to the pin comments and comment a b c d or f I want to focus on some of the positives here for Mullen. I thought early in his career with the Raiders, he looked like a piece, right? Now, they've changed some defensive scheme over the years, which I think is a factor. Arizona trades for him. They got him for next to nothing, uh, which kind of surprised me since I thought he was pretty decent in 2020, 2019. NFL clearly not as high on him. Uh, 16 starts in 2020, 62.1% completion rate, which is... Not great. Uh, it's a little worse than the ground, but fewer yards. 604 yards, five touchdowns allowed. Not what you want, but two interceptions, 14 pass breakups. I thought he was solid enough. Promising young piece for the Raiders, but then again, wasn't good 2021 or this past year, if we're being blunt, for Arizona. Maybe even a bit better in uh, 2019. 10 starts in 16 games, 55.9% completion rate. Again, all per pro football reference, uh, publicly available. 424 yards, two touchdowns, one INT, 10 PBUs. You can make an argument, at least, that he kind of got a little bit worse every year, which isn't what you want. But we've seen Dan Quinn and this Cowboys coaching staff, Joe Witt, gets credit, too, for being able to help develop and grow some corners. Trayvon Diggs obviously stands out. Your safeties have played well beyond their expectations. Deron Bland has been a find for you, and you're at least getting some depth on the outside. Trayvon Mullen is an outside corner, just like Kelvin Joseph predominantly has been for the Cowboys, and Nishan Wright and Trayvon Diggs. Diggs and Deron Bland's are slot, and your emergency slot corner can still be Mackenzie Alexander, who you uh, added to the practice squad a few weeks ago. So you got more options now at corner, which I know is dicey uh, for a while there for the Cowboys. So do you like the move? Y for yes, N for no. Head down to that comment section, folks, and let me know. I don't think this means that much, by the way, for Kelvin Joseph. I still think he's going to get some ch chances to start. Uh, maybe is an indication of how they feel about more so Nashawn Wright. 
uh, or just the depth in general, because they were pretty thin at a very big area of need. And it's very tough to find competent corners, and we will see if Mullen checks that box uh, in mid-December. You typically don't find good football players. Now, Cowboys are trying, right? You, you bring in T.Y. Hilton, you bring in Trayvon Mullen, and I appreciate that they're trying. They're trying to win football games right now. This was a let's try to win some football games move, and I respect the hell out of that. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any overlap coaching staff-wise. I don't believe that there is uh, from Raiders time and or yeah Raiders time to Dallas, but you're trying to get some more depth. That's what this is. This is this is a flyer depth piece, and it's the type of move you like to make. You get him in. You I think he's actually a free agent after this year. I'm gonna check that real quick here with just a quick uh, a quick contract search. So apologies for the typing sounds you guys are going to hear. Uh, pretty sure he's in the last year of his deal because they turned down his fifth year option. Uh, yeah, it is. So I'm looking at the money right now. It's a $1.975 million base salary. You're going to divide that by 17 games over the course of the season. You're going to multiply it by the four games you have left, and you're looking at under half a million dollars for the final couple games for Trayvon Mullen. You pick that up as the Cardinals and Raiders were not going to end up paying it. So that's not that bad. It's a, it's a, it's a worthwhile flyer. It's not going to prevent you from doing anything in the offseason or anything else you want to do this year. It's about trying to see if you can get some better corner depth because you're down two starters, which is not something you ever want to have happen. Now, I am curious how they will continue to approach that outside cornerback room. Diggs, obviously, is the one who's been awesome this year. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, but there's Kelvin Joseph, Sean Wright, and eh, I'll see if Trayvon Mullen can get in the mix there. I, I like the move, by the way. Uh, but who should start at cornerback two on the outside? KJ for Kelvin Joseph, TM for Trayvon Mullen. Apologies to Nashawn Wright for not including him, but eh, let's be honest here. I, th I still think it's K K uh, Kelvin Joseph. I was rather whelmed by his first start, and it's only going to get harder, but at least you have some breaking case of emergency options behind him. So vote for me, KJ or TM. Uh, before we go here, again, make sure you guys are subscribed. I do want to mention there's no corresponding roster move needed right now. I would not rule out the possibility of the Cowboys doing another one at some point later to get an eighth offensive lineman up to the game day active roster because they put Terrence Steele and Jonathan Hankins on IR. Now, Steele's spot will probably be taken by Tyron Smith this week. I would uh, say it would probably be a setback if he didn't end up there. Uh, Hankins, however, going to miss the next four games. Cowboys think he'll be back for the playoffs, so we'll see. That's a future problem to how you juggle the roster and everything. But for now, no other roster moves needed. There might be another one coming to get a – Maybe it's a Dakota Shepley up for a few games because he's out of practice squad call-ups. So is Avion Collins. They like to have eight active offensive linemen. It gets you two more total game day actives when you do that. So we'll see what else they do. I'd say one thing to keep an eye out for is, you know what, maybe they make up an injury for Jalen Tolbert because you don't need him right now at receiver. He's not going to play over T.Y. once he's up to speed or Washington, and he's not much of a key special teamer. So I'd say keep an eye on Tolbert having an injury uh, if and when the Cowboys need that next roster spot.